Dark Talk carries the internet broadcast rating TVD, a broadcast that is specifically designed to be viewed or heard by the darting community and therefore may be incomprehensible to other lesser mammals. Darter discretion advised. It's time for Dart Talk. Brought to you by thedartzone.com. Stay in the zone. Thedartzone.com is an official Cosmo distributor and Windy City Fabricators, America's premier fabricators of orthotics and prosthetics. And Redwood Darts, America's newest tungsten darts. Stand straight and tall and hit them all. Redwood Darts. And now, here are your hosts, Mystery Mark and Steve P. Okay, welcome to Dart Talk. Welcome. It's a no, it's not Wednesday, it's Tuesday. Are we on? We are on. Oh, okay. we are Ooh. on. The show is are we actually, recording? We are so, recording. So early. This is an actual show Hi-ho. now. Uh, We're Steve, actually, we've actually started. Steve Nuts, <laughs> Yelman with Mystery Mark and Chat Room Girl, the erstwhile Chat Room Girl, brought to you by the Dart Zone. Stay in the zone. Dartzone.com is an official Cosmo distributor. Also, many thanks, Windy City Fabricators and Redwood Darts. How was your all uh, Labor Day weekend there? It was good. Mine was fine. Very relaxing. A lot yep. of golf. A lot of golf. Henrik Stenson. He played awesome. I He's played the best uh, all year out of anybody, really. So I, I don't know. I couldn't believe that track. I couldn't believe like they're playing in. Uh, they're playing in Lake Forest next week, <sighs> and that track is going to be easier than what they just played in. Yeah, and I'm going to be out of town. Yeah, I'm out of town for that. I'm out of town for the PGA. I'm out of town for the Bears game opening. I'm out of town for a free weekend of like uh NFL ticket on Direct TV. I'm out of town for it. It's like the best weekend to and a free weekend of Cinemax. Outside of that, I'm good. Well, <laughs> Atlantic Atlantic City better be good. Um, yeah, it better be. Yeah, that's too bad though. I mean, I actually, I, I think I'm going to try and go out to Lake Forest. I mean, you should. It'd be fun just to see them, but they're going to tear it up. They're going to just dominate that track. Like I, I have, you know, it's not going to be like when they played Cog Hill. No, no, no. It's no. going to be it's going to be like 22 to 27 under, just like the Deutsche Bank Open. I just, to be honest with you, I, I don't like that. I don't like these courses where anybody in the field can shoot well, a 61. I don't either, especially when it's the playoffs. Yeah. I, it, it's it's The tracks are supposed to be tougher. Mm-hmm. It isn't supposed to be like, you know. Best man wins. Yeah. Not, know. you know. But I agree. I you? Uh, How was your weekend? Event. Restful. Yeah. I basically took a, a weekend off of everything. I mean, literally everything. I didn't, like, look at Facebook. I didn't, like, touch a dart. So I... I'll be rested for Atlantic right. City. Well, that's good. Which is uh, my two ocean September, right? I'm going to have a yes, two ocean September. Yes, you telling me about that's that. That's right. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to I'm hopping in the water in Atlantic City, and mm-hmm. I don't care how cold it gets or whether there's a tsunami or something. This I'm weekend. going out there. Yeah, this weekend. Right. And then in two weeks, I'll be in Los Angeles, and I'm going to surf on the 19th. Well, I'm going to attempt to surf. In I mean, the other I mean, ocean. Yeah, I'll go in the Pacific. I'll eat it a few times and be like, okay, I tried, and mm-hmm. swim in. I mean, it'll be, you know. As long as there's no sharks, I'll be fine. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, and it's been decided I'm going to go uh, and do an exhibition. Okay, the, you did uh, work that out then. Yeah, I worked it out. 18th of September at the Dirty Bull Tavern somewhere in the San Fernando Valley. Mm-hmm. So we'll see if we can't do something entertaining for, for the guys there. Oh, that's nice. It'll be fun. I mean, I, I was talking to a couple of people about what they do with exhibitions. And next week I'm going to try to get Tony Martin on. He's a UK guy. Uh, he plays darts live. Uh, I, something about he was what a video player. What do you do? Just bring player. a bunch of pictures, some art. What for the, for the exhibition? exhibition? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. La- laser art. I don't know. Black light posters right. from the seventies. You know the Black Panthers <laughs> with the green eyes, stuff like that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I asked one guy about it. I'm like, well, what should you do? And he's like, well, maybe you know, you should like in the middle of a leg when you're ahead, you know, play left handed or something. I'm like, yeah. 
that's that's going to really be great. Yeah, you're what playing kind of some guy is that? where everybody's watching. You're so far ahead of them, you're going to play left-handed. Yeah. I mean, that's not going to work. No. I mean, I don't know. I played my sister left-handed once. She found out she was so mad at me. She's still mad. <laughs> she was, well, I'll bet you she's still she, mad about she, it. She probably still is. Well, because only because I won. If Well, she would have been mad even if I lost. Well, just because it's demeaning supposedly that I don't do I don't really do trick shots like every now and then I'll I'll throw from like the Aki at the next board and try to hit something Mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah the only trick shots I've ever done are are stuff like that where I got blocked and I had to move way way over or something and you know hit something from like you know seven feet off the center line of the bullseye Mm -hmm. right and then the other thing I do is I close my eyes right I've thrown ton 80s that way I've thrown like 17 dart 501 games like that. I've hit doubles. I used to do it a lot. I used to do it like maybe five years ago. If I was up, I'd close my eyes like and probably a cricket fall over. game. <laughs> no, I mean, it. I used to do it for practice to, so I could kind of, I, I would try to feel where I was, you know, if, mm-hmm. if everything was in the right spot and stuff. And if I got out of whack, I'd throw with my eyes closed a little bit and I could kind of feel if I was, you know, bringing the dart. Inside or outside or something like that. You know, I, I used to be able to feel. I stopped doing it a long time ago because I got a lot of guff. Guys are giving me a hard time about it, you know, because I got caught. Oh, right. Like I'd, well, be, I'd be playing some <laughs> league match that didn't really mean anything, and I would need one bull to win a cricket leg that I was up 200 points in four numbers. So I'd be like, all right, well, I'll hit the bull with my eyes closed, right? And then somebody said something. And well, no, what happened was Beanie I. Beanie demands a rematch. To me? Oh, gosh. All right, let's let's. <laughs> okay. Oh, triple ding, quadruple ding mm-hmm. on a rematch. Let's go. Really? Okay. I don't I even know what to say about that. That's in reference to the left-handed thing. So anyway, if anybody's got suggestions on on you know what would make up how, a good how would your exhibition, exhibition can be you know, successful? Put them yeah. in the chat room. Email your suggestions to darttalk at gmail dot com and hopefully get them to me <laughs> in, in the next dart week or so. Exhibition. Yeah, a dart exhibition, right. not a. Yes. Any other An art exhibition? You have story. to clarify. <laughs> well, I was trying to come up with a title too, right? Like, and then it, it's like everything you come up with that talks about yourself ends up. Well, to Mark me, and I still have our name from you from last week that nah, we haven't nah, said. We, 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 we've moved on from that. But what I was thinking is, is like, can you imagine a poster that said something like "An Evening of Dartistry"? I mean, is that not the most egomaniacal thing? Because I thought, well, that's but a nice title. Most people aren't going to understand what the heck you're talking about. It's a play on words. Well, I, artistry, dartistry. I, I mean, okay. I'm just saying. Anybody's got and suggestions, <laughs> feel free. Because, you know, I think it'd be <clears> fun. <throat> and, and you yeah. know, to be honest, you know, we've talked about, you know, we should have stuff like this. We should have, you know, exhibitions and stuff like that. It doesn't mean, you know, I'm going to just rain ton 80s on everybody so nobody get, yeah. you know, I can't play to a standard like Mr. Well, no. Phil Taylor averaged... 107 point something for the entire tournament in uh, Sydney. That's ridiculous. And almost 110 in the final where he like just shellacked Van Gerwen again. Really? I mean, it's like tournament in and tournament out. The, the guy's standard of play, I mean, his average game is so much better than anybody else's. It's not yeah. even funny. Well, his average I mean, game is as good as his average best game is game. better. Yeah. Than the A game of ninety nine point nine percent of all the people who've ever played the game in history. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's how dominant the guy's been. And you know, he had a little bit of a lull for a while, and all this other stuff. And you know, here he is back. It's just really impressive. Um, One hundred and ten. Spe- okay, so we have some news. Let's. Uh, Ooh, what do we got on the we show? Do? We, we should say news? what we have on the show. We have some news. We, we, we got to, we got a hold of Sean Narain. We have sh- we have Sean singing in the rain. Singing in the rain on the uh, air. Yeah, we'll Coming have up on him Skype. on. We'll we'll have him on after the first break. Um, he's been on a tear. You know, yes. we we, we, we talked mentioned him up a little week. bit after I saw him play in Chicago, mm-hmm. and apparently he's improved since then. So uh, he made the final of the, the. Well, he almost swept everything last week, right? And yeah. He, oh, plus he, they showed the. Uh, I saw a picture of. Uh, well, and we could do this when we talk to him. They had a picture of the final leg. It went to a deciding leg, the PDC Youth mm-hmm. Unicorn thing. Both these guys were on thirteen darters. In the youth. Yeah. Yeah. So it's nice to win the diddle. Yeah, of course. I mean, so, <laughs> but I mean, a pretty high standard of play, for you know. Right. People under and what, then he goes and gets second 21. place in 
Yeah, and took, the main out, event. Some, took out some good players. Right. So, I mean, you know. Uh, all so, yeah, we'll be to talking him. to yeah, him. Yeah, we'll talk to him a little bit. Um, now, now the news, uh, news, news, I mean, it's, uh, you know, um, for one, we need to preview the Atlantic City Tournament. now. Coming up this weekend. Yeah, I, I, I sent an email to the powers that are, and they said they're going to be taking time, sign-ups for the Sunday main event until Saturday night. So guys that are kind of want to play at the last minute, this is a, a little bit different. It, it always used to be advanced registration with a deadline like maybe 10 days in advance. Mm-hmm. But this year they're taking sign-ups pretty much up to the night before. So, I mean, that's a good thing. Um, the explanation we got is they extended the deadlines for all the tournaments this year since they did it for the first two and felt we should allow late sign-ups for the others. And next year, you know, they may do something where if you sign up late, there's an, you know, and, an, uh, and like a, a late fee or yeah. something. So, right. I don't know. I think that's good to give players the option. Um, sometimes it's hard to get it together. Sometimes it's, it's, it's hard to commit to a tournament in advance when – you have like an uncertain work schedule or you're not sure, you know, you got a project at work, you, you think you can make it, but if this thing goes over time, then maybe they're going to yank it or, you know, something like that where, you know, you're going to miss half the weekend and then who wants to, you know, fly for one day and stuff. So I like the idea that they're, they're adding some flexibility. Mm-hmm. Right. No, I, I agree. Think that, I think yeah. that's a good thing. Absolutely. Uh, what else? There are uh, two uh, hometown events for the, uh, New World Dirt Series in New this Orleans weekend, right. in November. There's a hometown event at the Lone Wolf Pub in San Angelo, Texas, and at the Third Base Sports Bar in Metairie, Louisiana. Yeah, Metairie. 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 Do you think they have a first base and a second base? And home base? You know, like the... How about off base? Or a moon base? No, I wasn't really going that far. I, was, I wasn't going there. Is there a free base? No. Wow. I was I was going towards making it to first base, making it to second base, and yeah, I got that right away and immediately <laughs> tried to change the subject. You know, but um, to free basing, you changed it to free basing. I'm that just makes, coming up with a lot different. Of sense. Ba- I said home base, moon base, you know, free base, whatever. Yeah. I mean, you just, so you changed sort it of to like drugs. The twenty thousand dollar pyramid or whatever that show sure right. used to be. Um, and then there's also, uh, I saw a post, uh, because, uh, anyone signing up for darts live for the USA open and for (laughs) stage six, uh, the special darts live room rate expires this Friday. So you guys need to book that, um, what 80,000 plus guaranteed. I mean, how do you miss that? Uh, you can sign up online if you go to the, uh, dartslive.com. Uh, USA Open link, and then there's also, I'll post this on our Facebook page. There's a link to to deal with the hotel. All right, for for guys that haven't seen it already, I, I'm I have no idea where they are with that. So is that all for the news? Um, there's well, okay, we we got some ladies issues, but really? let's talk about them later. <laughs> Do in you the show. really? Well, no, uh, women's darts, talk to me. women's darts issues. So, Dr. Uh, Sassy, I, right that's here. That's for a different show. Dr. Sassy, <laughs> late night. We have women issues. <laughs> <laughs> oh, would, I you think like, I would you like to be to air out my problems yeah. right here? Late night with Dr. Sassy. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> who who wants some really bad advice? <laughs> right. right. It's uh, just type your questions in right now. You know, <laughs> how to get those steamed curlers out of your hair in a hurry. When you get that late night I'm doorbell. Good. I'm good. I'm good. The slippers look good today. Thanks. It looks like they kind of went through the car wash or something. Well, you know, <laughs> I wear them in the shower. I've Those. seen your footwear before. You, you make it fun of. <laughs> okay. Can we go to a break? And, yes, we can. Uh, what have we done? We're going to break? Oh, my gosh. We've been chatting well, for 15 minutes. <laughs> I, I must apologize. I'm I'm on like zero sleep. So if, if I misspeak for the... Oh, yeah. Why don't we run the if disclaimer? If you misspeak, we need to disclaim it. Yeah, let's let's disclaim all my uh, all my uh, misspeaking for the rest of the show. The views, opinions, rants, and rampages expressed on Dart Talk 
do not necessarily reflect individually or collectively those of our sponsors, co-sponsors, wannabe hosts, hearing impaired critics or those with a penchant for attitudinal dysfunction. We at Dart Talk strive to provide you, the listener, with an educational, entertaining and fun filled experience each and every week. If after the show you, the listener, find yourself feeling uneducated, unentertained and or bored, we at Dart Talk consider that your own problem. Okay. That's okay. We all agree with that. <laughs> <coughs> Do we all agree? Mm-hmm. Are we, are we, you concur? I concur. You concur. Yes. Hickory said 102 shooters in last year's Atlantic City singles. What do you think? 50 to 60 in PDC throw? Uh, wow, 50 to 60? Wow, I hope it's more than that. I don't know. I mean, it, it it's kind of weird. I mean, I'm I'm looking at, you know, people are asking about going to, to the Vegas Open next January, and I'm like, okay, that tournament had like the worst payout of any tournament all year. And why would you go to that tournament? I don't know how much it costs somebody to go to that tournament if you're uh, for a Canadian, right? You're going to fly to Vegas in January and then play a tournament that has like less than a 50% payout. I mean, there, there are, you know, better tournaments. If you, if you analyze this stuff economically, there's way better tournaments to go to than that one. So mm-hmm. I can't imagine right. why anyone would go to that one. But I did want to talk a little bit about how do people prioritize and how do they determine what tournaments they go to? You know, because people go to we've tournaments for that different up. reasons. We've been bringing that up for a while. Have we ever, we... like, just really sat and, and nuts and bolts no. analyzed why you would go to one tournament than another? No, we keep threatening that we're going to bring it up, but we just, and we never, just get never get to do. it. Yeah. Well, we can't do so. it this week. Maybe we could do it next week. We'll get <clears> – <throat> I want to get Tony Martin on and get, like, a – we'll have, uh, you know, Sean on – you know, after the first break, he's Canadian. Tony Martin, being based in the UK, I, I have a feeling he's going to have a different take on a lot of this mm-hmm. stuff. So it'll be right. good to get him on the show. And uh, he can also talk some Darts Live because we'll have to preview Darts Live once we get back from uh, from Atlantic City. From Atlantic City. Right. Um, it's kind of weird. I mean, I was. Dartoid wrote an article. It must have been like two years ago about how the center of the dart universe was shifting to the far east. I mean, I don't. <clears throat> if if all the best players are in England, I don't know how you can really say that. Right. Right. But when you look at the sheer number of people that are playing, I mean, I don't. Know, I don't know what to make of it. Sometimes I really don't. I mean, well, shifting could mean yeah. I mean, but it, it could take twenty years to really shift it the power all that way over there well we'll see what happens you know, who knows? i mean i i don't know what that uh i don't know what to make of that but anyway okay we're gonna take a break you're listening to dart talk with uh steve penance Ellen, mystery mark chat room girl uh we'll be back in a couple of minutes with uh sean narain from calgary alberta we'll be right back <laughs>
Okay, back for the second quarter, brought to you by the Dart Zone. Stay in the zone. The DartZone.com is an official Cosmo distributor. Also, many thanks, Windy City Fabricators and Redwood Darts. I believe on Skype uh, we have Mr. Uh, Sean. Hopefully. Singing Hopefully in the rain. Hopefully he's still hanging around. Singing in the rain. Sean the rain from, I believe it's Calgary, Alberta. Are you with us, Sean? Yeah, I'm here. How you doing? Uh, I'm good, man. Did Just I? hanging out with my son. Oh, awesome. Okay. Um... Did I get it right? Calgary, Alberta? Yeah, that's her. That's her? Yeah, that's her. <laughs> Sorry, I got a call here. Oh, okay. <laughs> somebody somebody heard you on the show, and they're like, dude, calling you dude, up. Hey, dude, you're on I the can show. hear you on the yeah, show, man. I was thinking, uh, dude. ironic timing. <laughs> that, that is awesome. So, Sean, um, I guess we'll, we'll take turns asking you questions. Um, but for the people that, that don't know you, can, can you give us, like, the... Uh, like the skinny on yourself there, you know, where you're from, how old you are, you know, how long you've been playing darts, the basic stuff. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, you know, I'm Sean Noreen. Uh, I'm 20 years old. I'm from Calgary, Alberta. I started darts in Ontario. Uh, I was probably around three years old when I started shooting darts. You know, my parents made me shoot at the three as my 20. It was a very good idea, actually. And, uh, you know, throughout the time, eventually we had to move over to Calgary, and that's really where I made my name is through Calgary. Met some friends who took care of me and my cousin Trevor, and uh, this is this is where we become from it. Uh, it's a good good organization we have over here. Okay, did you? So he's did been you, playing you longer than me. You mentioned your cousin. Did your co- cousin throw darts? Oh yeah, oh yeah. He's the anger. <laughs> Gets a little upset, so I'll give him a little time. But I bet you one day maybe me and him will play on TV together. Nice. You know? I like that. That sounds That'd good. Fun. For sure. For sure. Were Were you on the uh, on the provincial team that went to the uh, Canadian Nationals this year from Alberta? Yes. Yes, I was. So it was was it you and uh, Terry Hayhurst and who else was on that squad? Oh, I was. Uh, Let's see, Ken McNeil got first, and then I got second. And then I, I don't know who got after that. I know Terry got fourth or fifth. Uh, Gerald Gilcrest was on the team. Jeff Howard, Jim Edwards, Jacques Lessard. Uh, Rick Arnott, he, he's a veteran. He he should have been on the team, but he decided to back out. Must, must have had some work or something. Uh, so I think Keith Giles got to take his spot. And... Uh, then, you know, for the ladies' side, we had my sister, actually. She was on the team, Christy Clark. She played pregnant. And um, let's see, Linda Lettingham, she's a veteran. Eh, I can't, can't really recall. Cindy, Cindy Hayhurst there, Cindy Party, as most would know. Uh, Angelina <laughs> Palmina. <laughs> I can't really remember, you know. <laughs> okay, and then uh, I saw somebody posted something and and I, I went on the NDFC website, which has not been updated lately. Um, are you now the number one ranked uh, uh, yeah. male player in Canada? Yeah, I am. Uh, I checked that out yesterday. It's, it still says Dave Cameron on the front page, but if you click the ranking list, it shows that I'm number one. But it, it, I got two more counts than Andre Carmen, so he, he could still catch up really easy. So could quite a few people, so... But right. Well, for now you're number one. Yeah, I think absolutely. You know, that's pretty cool. I don't know why they wouldn't yeah. update the front page of their website. Right. I mean, yeah, I want to say this because it's pretty funny how you know a lot of the posts about me on the Facebook are are about me being the top ranked youth <laughs> all the time. And you know, I've been an adult for two years in the adult sector. The top youth is Dawson Marshall. You know, I just want to clarify that. You know, sometimes I think about it. Okay, well, now, when you're talking about youth, you're talking about, like, on the NDFC side. Is there an age cutoff for that? Are you too old to be a youth? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? Uh, the, I was, I was uh, in the adult sector for two years. I was actually at the adult nationals last year. So two years ago was the last time I played youth. And you're are you 20 years old? Yeah. Uh, I turned in 21 in October 1st, so a couple weeks. Is that an age cutoff for the youth, or did you just choose to be in the adult sector because... No, that's the age cutoff, man. Is uh, 18? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I in don't fact, know. for the world, it is. 
for the world, except for the PDC. But for the BDO, 18 is the cutoff. In fact, 19 for Canada, 18 for the world, and then for America, I'm pretty sure it's 2021. So what about at that age playing darts? Where do you go at the age of 19 and 20? All right, what's the drinking age in Canada? I mean, can you still get in the bars and throw darts, or you know, do you have well, to find games somewhere? Well, you know, like anywhere, you could go to a billiards, or in England, you go to a Riley's club, or I don't know what the underage club is there, but you could always play darts. Uh, I don't really register darts as a bar game. I don't even play in leagues anymore. <laughs> Honestly, the last time I really was into league, I was about 11 years old. That's when I played in the bar leagues. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, uh, yeah, in Ontario, it's a bar and grill, so we're allowed in the bar. Right, right. right. Okay, are, are you playing in the, uh, is it the uh, the VFW thing, or where, where do you normally play? Are you just playing at home until you go out to tournaments? Yeah. That's that's about it. Just sit at home, and uh, when whenever I feel like I really want to be on that stage at the moment, I uh, imagine myself there and just go throw a couple of darts. Since you're only 20, with playing darts as long as you have those, is there anybody that you looked up to or emulated, or or is it just you've just been playing and you have your own style and? Well. Um, Andre Carmen, I, I liked to watch his games when I was a kid. Uh, Terry Hayhurst, I looked up to him as well. And uh, I didn't really watch the games on the TV too much. You know, I was more interested in the games that I was at, watching my parents play in the Provincials. So I looked up to them. Andre Carmen the most. That's Andre, dude, where's my Carmen? Yeah. yeah. Andre, <laughs> dude, where's my Carmen? Hey, hey Sean, I have one. a question for you from my chat room. Um, will you be playing in the World Masters? No, unfortunately not. Who who asked that question? Um, one of my one of my chat room, the Hickories. He's from here. <laughs> I feel like it's my mom who asked that question. <laughs> oh. <So. laughs> I no. did. I, I, I may have seen her in the chat room earlier. It's it's quite possible. <laughs> no, it wasn't. <laughs> um, have you played in in the World Masters before? Yes, last year. Uh, I uh, I was very confused, I guess, about the first day uh, for the Lakeside Qualifier. Uh, I got my name registered in, and I went to my board. I was the first one up, and I guess you got to do a draw that they don't call you for, but I, I don't remember them telling me about having to do it myself. So I ended up getting disqualified the first day, but I managed to play the Masters, you know, after I dealt with that little issue and lost the first round to Paul Jennings. So... You you flew all the way to England and they DQ'd you because you didn't do a draw. Yeah, and the, the ironic thing was when I walked up and I said, uh, "Can you help me out?" I I was very flustered, especially as a young person, and, and my parents weren't there to defend me. And some something that I heard from them was, "This is like the fifth time it's happened this morning." And well, I, may- I said to them, "It's the first round." <laughs> well, maybe that's an indication that they didn't communicate that, something clearly. Uh-huh. That's what I told them. <laughs> and this was the same tournament where uh, I think it was uh, Gordon Dixon was going to actually, they DQ'd a guy, and then the guy kind of said, hey, can you let me off the hook? And they Gordon kind of said, okay, I'll play him, and then lost. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, I, so I that's but that so it's okay then if the if your opponent I, I says know. I'll let you off the hook I, then I you play know. but if if your yeah, opponent says no, that that's in any tournament though. Yeah, if, I've sure. had that in yeah. any sport as well. It's yeah, not, you not don't want to like win. You don't want to win by a forfeit. I don't know who right. took the forfeit over you. It was probably somebody who was fearful of losing not only to a Canadian but to a Canadian who was only nineteen years old. Ah, uh, yeah, fun. I know exactly. I saw I, while well, I was practicing on my board waiting. I saw the guy look at me and watch me practice for a couple moments and then walk away. He didn't even think to say, hey, are you playing me? But I, I don't want to put no disrespect to the BDO. I, I do like the organizers there. I like the people. I, my apologies if there's any offense taken. 
Well, you, they, you can't offend anybody me, on this uh, show, Sean. <laughs> I'll, I'll rip the BDO for you. That's you why know, we have the disclaimer. That's, that's so, why I'm here. So, I, Sean, I'm very upset with the BDO myself. My, trust me. My uh, chat room is pretty uh, intelligent tonight about you, Sean. So, can I tell people why you're not going to the World Masters? Or would you be uh, okay with that? Uh, why don't you I just ask him why BDO he's not waiver, going? Man. Uh, I should honestly probably sign the waiver if it was hockey and the whl told me that i can't play in the nhl right now well the nhl don't have me a spot yet of course i'd sign the waiver for the whl but in this sport you know opportunities aren't so vast in our area so the pdc seems to have a little bit more quality to it again no no offense but that's that's the way I'm gonna choose. That's that's what I want promoted in my country. I'm watching a PDC match right now, not a, not a BDO match. Well, it's so, unfortunate they're making you choose. Yeah, I'm very upset with that. Yeah, I think everybody. I I think all the players agree that it's kind of like ridiculous that we're even you know dealing with this mm-hmm. stuff. And um, I don't know what we'll. I don't know what next year is gonna be like. But I'm I'm happy to see that. You know, you're coming down in the States and playing and playing well. Um, tell us about London a little bit, uh, Sean. Tell us oh. about uh, what was your uh, what was your kind of uh, highlight match there? Highlight match. Uh, well, I never got to play the one I specifically was nervous about, but the alligator bit me hard enough, I'll tell you that. Because I, for, for a month. I'm assuming that's a Canadian thing. Uh, well, we don't have alligators in Canada, Mark. Come on. <laughs> Good one, Sean. Just the saying. I mean the saying. <laughs> I, I don't think he knew what you meant there, Sean. Maybe it's the, maybe it's the teeth on uh, your hat. I'll explain it right now. What, okay. what I mean is um, for the month, I was sitting there, and uh, I was telling my friends, too, you know, hey, like, you know, talk to me a little here. Uh, I'm kind of nervous about playing this kid, Dawson Marshall. You know, I assume I'm going to come up against him in the final, and uh, he, he has a possibility of beating me. He's done it before. Okay, you're this, talking this – the... sorry, I, I don't mean to interrupt you. Just so the listeners know, you're talking about now the PDC Unicorn uh, Youth Championship. Yes, yes, that in the got under you into, and, and this was to qualify to go to England and, and play in the, the – PDC Unicorn Championship next. Yes, the same one that Dan Lobby Jr. won there. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. So I was telling my friends that, and uh, they 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 gave me their respect. You know, they gave me their speech. But when I got there, the the alligator thing, Mark, is is Dawson lost in the in the quarter or the semifinal, and this man named Kiefer, young man, he's eighteen. Uh, he he come in. I I. I played him once my last year of youth. He almost beat me then too, but he came and he w- he was shooting amazing. You know, he took me three to one, and then I thought to myself, like, whoa, you know, it's it's time to step it up here. Uh, if I don't, I didn't even want to feel the thought of him being able to shoot at a double. So I made sure that you know I was on my game, focused. And uh, the last game, actually, I got a picture. I saw that. Uh, We were talking about it before the show. You guys were both on 13 darters, I think? Yeah, yeah. Well, my shots go, I shot first, 134, 96, 140, 91. And he come behind me, and and he's young, you know. He don't play as much as me, but... He's young. He's two years younger than you, dude. (laughs) He's He's a 20-year-old. That kid's young. Young experience. I, oh, I, oh right. I play a lot. Yes, I play, yes. I do my thing, you know. <laughs> and and he she, he comes behind me and he goes 100, 121, 100, 140. <laughs> if you see the picture I was I'm 40, looking at right now, way. I'm sweating. Right. <laughs> so that that's the alligator is is it took a lot to do what I had to do in that weekend. Uh, and maybe I won the other two tournaments or done well in them because I was more concentrated on the one, and the other ones where I was more relaxed to go through. So you, okay, so you were actually focusing most on the on the PDC Unicorn Youth thing to oh, uh, qualify for England, and then you know the the adult events that you played after that were pretty much gravy. Um, not gravy, <laughs> but yeah, 
Kinda. Do you look at do you look at the brackets then before the tournament to see who you possibly could play, or do you just try and go in there and say I got to beat everybody and I got to play my best regardless? Well, I I'll give you an answer, but I'll say we wouldn't have to answer that. Somebody will mention it in chat room, but <laughs> I I just show up hoping that it's going to be a good day. I played darts all day yesterday probably, so the practice for the morning isn't going to be that great. Um, don't look at the bracket for sure because well, it's not going to change anything. And uh, just play the day, man. Just wake up whenever you feel comfortable enough, like you've had your breakfast. And I, I guess a good night's sleep does do well, you know, but at my age, of course... I'm I'm up till you know two three in the morning on on an easy night. So I don't know. It's, I don't really pay attention to that. No. Do you? I that, mean, do you play more answer. against the board than your opponent? I mean, when you finally get to the no, the I match. play my opponent when I get there. Yeah, that's when I pay attention to him. But eh, eh, no, don't play the board. Realize what's going on in the match for sure. Make sure you know everything that he's doing, everything that he's trying to do to you. He might be playing head games. Or if you're not paying attention to his game and you're just playing a board, well, you might have gone for the wrong shot at the end of it. All right. Good. Hmm. Okay. Let's um, let's take a break. You can gather some questions from the chat room, and, and we'll be back in a minute with uh, Sean Narain from uh, Calgary, Alberta. You're listening to Dark Talk. We'll be right back.
Okay, back for the second half, brought to you by the Dart Zone. Stay in the zone. Dartzone.com is an official Cosmo distributor. Also, many thanks, Windy City Fabricators and Redwood Darts. We still are uh, talking with Sean singing, singing in, in the, the rain, rain <laughs> from uh, Calgary, da, da, Alberta. Da, da, da. Speaking of which, do you, do you like the nickname, Sean, or no? Uh, definitely not. No? <laughs> no? no? <laughs> nice. Have, Have you ever heard? seen the movie? <laughs> Uh, or no. Clockwork Orange. <laughs> what did we thought? Caddyshack era? Or no? No, oh, no, 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 no. There's no, a movie no. called Singing in the Rain. It's very famous. It's got a guy with an umbrella <laughs> dancing in Paris. In and he's rain. singing in the rain. He's Gene Kelly. <laughs> right. Well, no relation to Grace Kelly. You definitely might see me doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so apparently no one called you this in high school. Or no. No, they called school, me Big well, Shawner. Big, big he is only yeah, tw- he is only that. twenty, and most people at that age probably haven't s- even heard of singing in the rain. Okay, look. On the one hand, you have the big Shauner. On the <laughs> other hand, you have singing in the rain. I yeah. gotta tell you, I, I would say ask your dad. He, uh, your dad might actually like the nickname. Ask your dad if you well, like singing in the rain. What do you guys rain. think of Sean Rain the Strange? No. No. no, 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 that's that's no good. No. That's no yeah. good. We could work. we could talk about this in Atlantic City <laughs> if if you need a good nickname because I got to tell you most of the nicknames I see out there are beyond lame. I mean, it's just yeah. sort of like I went off on this last week. So. Right. Yeah. But the yeah. names that we came up with were really good. Yeah, we had some good ones. We liked. I yours. thought of a really good one. It was, it was Sean Narain. Does that ring good or no? That's your name. that's your name. Yeah, it's a good nickname too. Sean hmm. Narain Narain? What? Sean no, Narain we'll Narain. We'll just say what? Sean Narain. Oh well oh. <laughs> yeah, you could go you could go without the nickname. Well then it's not a nickname. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. It will become one. It's just well, a name. We'll we'll work on something. Well, okay. Yeah. I mean Well, actually all I can say is we don't really care whether you like it or not. We're probably still gonna call you that. So that's yeah. <laughs> that's about as good as it gets. <laughs> well something will catch along one day, right? It's all up to the people. I've exactly. Right. Well, we're just making suggestions. Okay. <laughs> well, you we need a we need a good one for Terry Hayhurst and for Cindy Hayhurst if you got but any suggestions. Terry's the Titan. That's well, okay. You can't be a Titan when you only weigh like 110 yeah, pounds. Right. I mean, it, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it, I thought I, we I, did rolling in the hay. Uh, no, I told you that was a bad one. No, uh, we didn't like rolling. Him, if it makes him comfortable, then that's good. Yeah, oh, is that? I don't think that's our criteria yeah. on this show. No, 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 no. no, no. no. <laughs> we we have a completely different set of rules. When it, when it well, here let's uh, let's ask the so. chat room. Chat room, you want to come up with a nickname for Sean? You can ask the go. chat room. We'll see yeah. who's in the chat I, I, room. I'm guessing we're not going to 
Well, like I don't know. Is. We'll see. We'll see. We'll Singing see in the rain on. is going to stick. So, uh, <laughs> so well, you need something that will also fit on the, on the back of your shirt. Uh, speaking of shirts, um, you might want to thank uh, uh, your sponsors. I don't know how many you have or, you know. Anything like oh, that, well, but yeah. are you getting Thanks, some help? Uh, sure. Well, I have Puma, Puma darts. I'm one of the young guns, so thanks a lot to them. They're pretty good with me. They chose my darts, and they, uh, that's what I'm sticking with. Um, How long have you been I'd with like them? To thank my parents. <laughs> that's a that's a really big sponsor for me. They without them, I wouldn't even be in the game. So yeah, it's, I I would I I would have to imagine you know not knowing that much about the youth dart scene that um the I'll the get parents to that in a second for okay sure. I, I was just thinking I the parents things. have to make a lot of sacrifices to oh, for uh, sure for sure but they they own a travel agent company uh sun time vacations so you know they 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 know their stuff and how to get around and make it a little bit cheaper i guess I see. Okay. That always helps for sure. Yeah, that's yeah. nice. So if you ever want to check it out, that's also a sponsor, suntimevacations.ca. I hope you don't mind me saying that. No, that's okay. How long you been with Puma? Okay. And it might be S Time Vacations, not too sure, but you Google it up, it should come up. <laughs> <laughs> Figure it out. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Um, what well, you keep trying to ask me the just same said, question. How long, how long have you been with Puma? Oh, uh, well, I got signed. Terry Hayhurst actually hooked me up with it uh, a year ago, and uh, they saw me as a young gun. And recently, they declared me a young gun again. So, year and a couple months here. Okay, somebody else wants to be heard from. Yes, it sounds yes. like. <laughs> <laughs> Is he throwing darts yet? Uh, in his mind. Oh, okay. But he's saying dart. <laughs> He's saying dart. His first words. <laughs> His first words were dart. He's saying dart. Oh, no, he just said it. He said, say dart. Say dart. Oh. Now, now he's not going to do yeah, it. Yeah, now he's shy. No. Now there, now all of a sudden there's a, a microphone on him. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my chat room is not good. Okay. Well, Sean, let, uh, you, you, you said that you're signed by Puma. What, what kind of darts are you throwing these days? Uh, the Invader series, I think. Okay, what kind of uh, what kind of weight are you using those newfangled gram, tips? Usually. Twenty-two gram. Yes. Yeah. And then I uh, lose my darts a lot, Steve. Pardon me for interrupting. No, it's okay. You say you lose your darts a lot? But yeah, I do. <laughs> it's kind of a routine. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's, how does it's, that it's, work? I don't have a case, and uh, I get into my car, and you know the when you come to close the door, there's a little spot to put your darts. And then when I get out to fill up for gas or something, I open it up and forget the darts are there, and one will fall out. And <laughs> well, I I must say the one of the first things anybody ever told me when I first started playing darts was the guys like, "Look, get a dart case that you can uh, attach to your belt, and you won't lose your darts." And I literally had the same case for like eleven years and never lost a set of darts. So you might consider, you so know, there, Cosmo makes a great. There's your advice for the day that uh, you might look into. <laughs> yeah, we could talk yeah. about that uh, when I see you uh, <laughs> this weekend. Yeah. Um, I need a manager for sure. I offered to do it for uh, an American player, and and I I can't believe that he did not immediately take me up on it. So I don't know. Maybe what? that's going to be my career is uh, being a dart, dart manager, manager when my arm falls off. Um, let's talk some goals, Sean. Uh, you're, it, it seems to me like you're having a pretty good year, and you've been, you know, especially in the last few months, playing really well. You're scheduled to go play the PDC Unicorn Youth Challenge next spring, as, as far as I know. What, uh, where do you see yourself, or what are your immediate goals, aside from, you know, winning as often as you can? Hmm. Well... Ah, I don't quite know how to say that for that one. Okay. <laughs> I always make jokes about it. I say I want to be the best looking dirt player to be in the world championship. <laughs> nice. Well, okay. <laughs> to be oh, to be uh, he qualified it cuz right away I was going to say you got no chance, but to be uh -huh. in the oh, well, yes there's you do. I don't know, there's some pretty good looking uh Steve Beaton, the bronze Adonis. You know, everybody uh, says he's good Dave looking. Dave Switzer would do well. 
we'll well, say that. Uh, we'll see if Switzer can get there. He doesn't seem to play as often as you do. So he does well though, and he oh, could he's a great player. Just decide that he wants to, right? Well, you know, we should just put him on posters, whether he shows up or not. I think That's that would help I the said. image of the sport. Put him on the cover of you Bullseye. Haven't, you haven't met Switzer. <laughs> no, I have not. He's a cross. Okay, did you but ever see it, the Running just... Man? Did you ever see the Running yes. Man? Okay, do you remember Richard Dawson's like Scandinavian bodyguard? Yeah. Switzer looks like that without the beard. Okay. You know, he's actually. But that's a, you know, such a subjective goal. I mean, what happens if you think you're the best looking, but then what if there was a panel of people that said, ah, no, you're not? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, then the other people who didn't say nothing must think I am, right? Come on. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I don't know where this, this conversation right. is, is <laughs> yeah, going. Yeah, We're back goal, with late night. The, the goal of every <laughs> dart player, yeah, you, you can't necessarily be the best. Even Phil Taylor, you know, we all lose. So, you know, just to be there. So you might as well goal. be the best looking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's right. just uh, that's, I'm, I'm, uh, every I'm down time with I that. Thought, I, I knew you were going to ask that question. <laughs> and I thought about what I would say to that. And it just kept popping into my mind, you know. <laughs> Okay, well, it's something that you know, you know, down the road, you know, it it may kind of crystallize for you a little bit. I mean, it <laughs> it's sort of one of those questions that's like hard to answer. You know, you're so busy trying to play and just get from one tournament to the next that you know yeah. some guys don't have a lot of long range planning. Mm -hmm. That's where you call me and say, "Be my manager," and I figure it all out for you. See, <laughs> there you go. That's that's you know where I add value when your arm falls off. Right, uh, which like it I hasn't say, fallen just off yet. Be there, guys. Right. Just want to, just want to be in the world championship. That's the goal. Well, other I think than that, to play well, that that could possibly happen in the world championship. That that is a worthy goal. Um, let 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 me kind of, I'm I I know you're a dedicated dart player. I'm wondering if there's other stuff you do for fun, or if you're just sort of like dart, start, 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 starts. You know, it sounds like you got a youngin in the house there. Do you have any other hobbies? Do you go fishing? Do you play foosball? I mean, uh, <laughs> Vic Victor says you <laughs> play foosball. I try and play foosball. <laughs> I hear uh, you're not very good. Golf, man. You like golf? I, I play golf. I, I love golf. I play. A, I play a little golf. Yeah, I, yeah. I can. I can shoot under like a hundred and twenty. So yeah, I need. When I, go I to need a bar like to hang out. It's not like me and my friends play darts. We play pool. You play you pool. Know? I don't like pool. I don't bowl. You don't That's bowl. a good game, but uh, the sport that I played and uh, it halted darts for a while was hockey. Of course, know, if, you're if Canadian. Hockey was going on. It was hockey. It wasn't dart time, for sure. Um, I made double A the one year, but I got cut pretty quick. I wasn't that good, but I made double A. That made me feel good. Do you get to play a lot of golf, or is it hard because I mean every weekend you're playing darts? Yeah, I play golf, man. Uh. Every weekend I'm playing darts, and every Friday or Thursday to Friday and Monday I'm traveling, so I don't really have much time to work too much, so I get my free time to play, and as long as I do well in tournaments, I'll have a bit of cash to do so. All right, nice. nice. Makes sense. So golf and foosball, no bowling, and then what, <laughs> you're done with hockey, is that it? Uh, I'm trying to get back into it trying to i don't want to like play play you know but that i need that as a hobby to stay healthy janice you're busy very busy <laughs> i'm not busy <laughs> <laughs> no just the traveling you know i, I sit in airports for again. most of my time you sit in airports most of your time mm -hmm. um what you know I'm 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 curious you know you play a lot of Canadian tournaments and then you come down and you play in the states if you take away like the PDC events you've played in do you see a big difference between the tournaments you guys have in Canada and the tournaments uh, you've attended in the states No not not skill or tournament wise uh, you know, for America and Canada, maybe a little more social life in America. Not saying that you guys don't pay attention to the game. I'm just saying when I go there, I tend to have or let loose a little more when the tournament's over, if you know what I mean. There's more friends. I find you guys are more friends together. And here we don't have big enough groups. So when we hang out, we hang out in one room and that's it. Like when I went to Syracuse, you guys kind of have a club. 
you know. But it's still a tournament. It's still playing a knockout round, and only thing different is you do best of three, and we do best of five. Do you, do you consider that a big difference or kind of somewhat inconsequential? Uh, uh, I don't know. I've really I've thought about it before, man. And the two out of three, best of five. If there's a bull in the action, then it don't matter. You play. It's it starts. You got to start good or finish good. However it goes. See, I like his attitude. Yeah. Like, just right. let's let's just play. Let's this is the game. Let's do wins. it. Right. Yeah. What do you got? I got some questions from my chat room. Oh, are you ready for the chat room questions? Buckle oh, up. Sure, man. <laughs> All right. Okay. Do you? I uh, jotted some notes down, but <laughs> I didn't know the questions. Oh, these are these are easy. These are really easy. Do you uh, do you play any soft tip, or do you only play steel? Oh, I wanted to mention that. Uh, I wanted. I was thinking of how to get into it, but I was gonna get my friend Dion LaViolet. He wants to call Paul Lim and Rob Heckman to go to the Vegas tournament there. Yeah. Well, they're still taking we'll signups. There's a waiting list. Talked about it all year, and Mom forgot to register me. He, you know, it should be. It's not her fault. It's, it's my own problem. But well, you may <laughs> still. You may. It's short notice. You may still be able to get in. Uh, you say there's a waiting list? Yeah, there's a waiting list, but yes, but I know they had told one. Me 1,200 people. Well, no, there's 256 that they take, but if people don't show up or people have to cancel last minute, I know there's a waiting list. Uh, we want to go, me and him, as far as I know. So. Dion, Dion's a good guy. Do you know him? Uh, have you known him a long time? Uh, yeah, when I when I mentioned that there were some friends that took me in and took care of me and my cousin, uh, he was the one. Uh, I, I basically consider myself his protege. Nice. His protege or his prodigy? I don't know. One of them? <laughs> Both? Both. <laughs> yes and yes? Well, there's in there's the, a possible the nickname for you. It, I'm pretty sure it's taken, right? <laughs> the, the, well, no. I, I don't know any darters that are known as the prodigy or the protege. Which one sounds better to you? The protege. The protege. The protege. I, I, I don't like that. I don't the like prodigy. That prodigy sounds better. All right. And you're everybody's mind. progeny, so you can't use that one. Well, y- Sean the prodigy in the oh, What do you think? Do you want me to give you the chat room names I have so far for no, you? I'm not, I'm not giving. Uh, up I don't know here. what you're doing over there. I'm Sean, not giving up. Sean, I'm singing in the rain. Blame no, it on the no on the rain. Blame it on the rain. Yeah, blame it on the rain. Blame it on the rain. And then the back to our singing no. in the rain. No. It's because you're singing while your opponent's crying. Uh, well, uh, okay. And then we well, have Sean, the that's Chronicles of Narania. That was bad. Okay, well, no, that was actually kind of <laughs> clever. Yeah. It's kind of clever. Yeah. Chronicles yeah. of Narnia, Chronicles yeah. of Narain doesn't Narania. sound right. It doesn't yeah, flow yeah. as well, but yeah. it's not bad. But it was but a I good try. I had to try. say it. I had <laughs> to say it. It was Phil. Oh, okay. All right. That was a good try. Um. So d- you said you took notes there. So that was your only question from the chat room. After well, half an actually, hour, actually, I had another got? one. I gotta. I well, have to go back. Maybe up you should here. jot this stuff down. I, I mean, Sean's been. there taking notes. I, well, what do you got? I have been something about. See, see, see she makes she fits. Hickory. She hasn't written anything. Sean's down. been kicking butt. I'll, I'll, um, does shoe size give someone an advantage? In his opinion. <laughs> <laughs> That's size thirteen. There you go. That was the question. Awesome. See? Well, there was no answer yes or that no. Was he well just worth, says a 13. Was, you th- th- a 13. Th- what is wrong with the show tonight? Is it just me? <laughs> so you have notes. Is there anything in your notes that you would like to mention that we didn't bring up or what? Well, I have another question. I have, oh, I have a question right, for you. So, then. so what's your what's your favorite? <laughs> what's the the tournament or your biggest win that stands out? I mean, we all have one that is your your biggest win. Oh. Wow. Oh. Well, I guess I don't have one. If I have to think about it, I definitely don't have one. The first one that would come to mind is Nationals. That's really great for me. I have a lot of fun there. A lot of competition to come up against, too. Okay. Um, I I could say, you know, Q School or something like that, or Celsi in England when I went to the England Open and England Classic, but... You know, that's not one that I regularly participate in. I've I've gone to nationals, youth nationals, and the nationals since I was young. And hey, boy. Okay. Um, give give us a little uh, idea what your 
what your practice routine is like these days. Are you just playing a lot of legs, or is there anything that you do, you know, like warming up or anything? Oh, no, like I said earlier, uh, I just, whenever I feel, whenever I'm feeling like darts, I just go and practice, man. I, I don't practice like eight hours a day or anything, uh, or maybe even two. I don't even do that. Not even one, no. I just... Whenever, like I said, whenever I start imagining myself on the stage and I really get those chills and goosebumps, I kind of step up to the line and throw darts for as long as my arm can take it. Interesting. Hold that thought. We're going to take our last break, and we'll be right back. You can put some more apple juice in that bottle here. <laughs> Listen to Dart Talk with Mark, Steve, Chatroom Girl. We've got uh, Sean Narain from Alberta, Calgary, Alberta, Calgary, Alberta and we'll be right back. <laughs>
Okay, back for the fourth quarter, brought to you by the Dart Zone. Stay in the zone. Dartzone.com is an official Cosmo distributor. Also, many thanks, Redwood Darts and Windy City Fabricators. Uh, we still are uh, talking with Sean Narain from uh, yep. Canada. Uh, Sean, during the break, uh, we were talking about uh, the difference between the way uh, the youths in Europe are uh, brought up in training and the way uh, the youths are doing it in North America. Can you, you tell everybody what you were talking about there? All right. So um, uh, I just thought an example is I went to England my first time to play in a youth tournament. And when I got there, I realized that I could have played in the adult tournament, that all the other kids were playing in the adult tournaments, and they had a respect for the game, that the game was exciting. You know, like it was something that they needed to do, something that they went out of their way to do, you know. And here it's the kids, they, they're grouped together, they play alone, they, they have no idea that there's an actual world of darts ahead of them, so we don't quite train them as well here. And like I said on the break, that gives, when, a, when one kid wants to play against the adult, the adult usually thinks here, oh, he's just a kid, he'll have no skill. Um, and the kid will also not have the training that kind of, gives them the respect to the game and the knowledge of the game you know that experience we now have to pay more money for experience for that over here when over there that experience and training is given to them right there in their home city it's a big thing you know it's not a big thing only as a group for the country it's a big thing in their home city you know so i was saying we got to find a better way to transition the youth to the adult and it's a hard transition. It, it takes a lot of skill to play adult as opposed to the youth. So how can we find that transition to make the youth feel comfortable enough to transfer to the adult? I have three names, Steve Russell, Jacques Lessard, and Terry Hayhurst. These people here played the youth. I think uh, maybe Martin Tremblay did too. I don't know. Um, or sorry, Sylvain uh, Ger Gerwin from Quebec played the youth with Jacques Lessard. That's the one. And lost youth. I have a list of that. Uh, Jocelyn, he got a triple crown in our youth nationals. And uh, ever since that year that I played, I never heard from him. I've heard of his name. People talk to me about him, but I've never seen him or heard of him at a tournament. And I know that he would have done well, too. And another one is Clemens Snow. He, he doesn't show up anymore as well. And he, he's a past winner for the Youth Nationals in Canada. And uh, sorry, <laughs> that's uh, it's harsh for our programs, you know, to lose all the youth as they go out. So I'm feeling that that's probably because of the transition. The transition from going from the uh, being a youth player to, to playing with adults. We, we've talked about raising the age limit. Right. And making the youth yeah. like make it up 21, they're 21. Right. But I don't think that's what he's getting at. I think what 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 and correct me uh, if I'm wrong here, Sean, what you're what you're saying is that the youth should start playing with the adults at an earlier age. Yes. But the problem is, is my question to you is uh, the drinking issue. Of course, we got to get if we're going to do something like that, you got to get rid of the drinking or you have to pay for a separate venue. Yeah, And then one day when the youth and the adult program, you know, when it's the mixed time, comes together, the drinking is prohibited for sure. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I agree with that. We'll have to, we'll have to kick that one around a little bit, Sean, and, and, and maybe we can come up with some coherent sort of policy mm -hmm. that, you know, would work. I, I to be honest, I, I didn't play as a youth. I didn't start playing until I was like forty one. You've actually been playing longer than me, Sean. So <laughs> when it comes to the youth stuff, I, I plead, you know, ignorance, pretty much. Um let's also talk uh, about the Canadian nationals. Now, uh you had a pretty good one this year, as I recall. Yes. Yes. Uh, I got a fifth in the nationals itself. Uh, I gained my master's invite through that. And also I won the Canadian Open. And uh, I wanted to talk about how 
that was luck. You know, it, it, it wasn't j- luck itself. There was skill involved. We get in trouble for saying people are lucky no, on No, no, no. I'm glad somebody <laughs> else is finally saying it because I, I have a feeling that he's going to... Uh, Explain. Well, kind of reiterate something I've said before. Yeah. But, okay, well, well go ahead, Sean. Well, I, I remember the first round. I, I forget the man's name. My apologies. But I uh, I played him. It was the final game, and he had 32 left, and I, I watched the dart in the middle of the air, and, and that's where I watched the dart. It's through the middle of the air. That's where I judge how good it's going to be. And uh, as it went through the air, it was perfect, and uh, it hit the double. I saw it like go into the double, and it was perfect. And all I saw is it bounced back, and the light blinded it, and it lo- I lost vision. It was like Angel took it out of the <laughs> took it out of the board for me, hey? I walked up. I, I even chuckled a little. You can't help yourself but chuckle a little at it, right? Walked up and shot and hit the double. Same thing the next game. The guy was up 2-1 on me. You know, he had his chances. It, it happens everywhere, you know. It, it took luck to get to certain points, and then I started really getting into it. The fear pushed my, my, my adrenaline to focus a lot more, I guess. That's a way of saying it. When you when you talk about fear, are you talking about the fear of losing? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, you're walking in, you're thinking, oh yeah, it's my day, I'm gonna win. That's how you feel, of course. That's what you want to to happen. But now you gotta gain the reality of what's really going on, you know, because it's a mental game as much as it's a physical game. Trust me, it's a physical game. But you, the reality, when you're down two nothing and it's first to three or one nothing in his first to two and the reality that you were at 190 points and he was at 60 the reality is that you should have lost and that you, you're really starting to figure out what's really going on so that's when you really gear your efforts in and focus your game that's that's what i find it happens to me a lot do you, you know? have do you have a different focus like if do you, like if you you have thirty two left and they're at one ninety, is is your focus different as opposed to when they have a bounce out at thirty two and all of a sudden you know you got fifty six, and now all of a sudden you know you just you got that break you should have lost, or is it just when you get to the line it's just throwing the darts anyway to win? Uh, you always throw to win. If you're behind or not, you always got to throw to win. But um. Yeah, no, no. You just got to throw to win. Hey, don't give up, man. Yeah, I'm not sure. You you were talking about, you know, is, is his mental frame of does mind different? Does something all of a sudden click in your head, you know, because you're, you're thrown to win, thrown to win, but all of a sudden you're like, bam, a bounce out on 32, and you saw a dart that you thought you lost, and now you have a – I mean, does it just increase your – is it – or can you not quantify whether it really increases your mental capability of focusing or not? You just take a deep breath and go, well, I got another chance and move on. You know what I mean? Uh, Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Don't Maybe I know what nothing, you mean. Don't man. I just, like I say, just throw it a win no matter what. If it, there's a bounce out, it happens, you know, but it don't change no ability of how I'm going to throw. That's for sure. Whether it's my bounce out or not, you know, it's, it's the same thing. A bounce out is part of the game. It's a miss. You know, the triple 20 is that red part, and there is a surrounding of metal around it that you can hit a bounce out. It, it's a miss. Mm-hmm. It's part of it. It's like hitting the 20. It's like missing the double. So, yeah, Vic- Victor if, said- if that answers your question, I, you yeah. know, maybe I don't understand it. Now, Vic- Victor yeah, said Steve's, Steve's met his challenge that you're, you're a deep thinker. <laughs> well, I... I, I think I know what everybody means, and, and I'm having a bad day, you know, because I'm kind of <laughs> like sleep deprived or whatever. But um, I, I've said, and I've gotten in trouble for this, but but I've said that whenever you win an event with a with a you know a tough field like the Canadian Open, you had to have some luck to get through it, even if that luck meant that you didn't run up against somebody's best three legs of his weekend that he's going to throw them against you. And somebody's going to go throw three straight 11 darters on you or something like that. You know, you, you get opportunities when people miss or when, you know, people have bad luck. And if you take advantage of them, right. you know, generally. Every sport's like that, though. Yeah. You, you need a little it's luck. It's part of the in, game. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, that's part of the game. Well, I guess when you give me a shot and I know you're at a double, I I guess I hit more doubles in those opportunities than whether he's at 190 and I'm at 32. I guess you're right, for sure. I guess a lot of the times when I walk up and I say to myself, oh, don't worry, you're going to get a second shot, maybe it, I slack off a little and just miss, you know? Maybe yeah. that happens more often on those opportunities than the ones where they're definite do or die opportunities. Right. Okay. Maybe that's I guess what it's you. Kind yeah, of what I was. Getting I, at. I think that sounds more I mean, like what you were getting. What's at. what I'm getting at? But it, and it's more like I'm not. You know, I obviously not the percentages of what you hit in those situations, but just if like if you can feel like a stronger urgency of. You know, and, and being able to focus because you have to focus, even though you know, now you know you have to hit it to win as opposed to being relaxed. Is there a more urgent or are you just as relaxed as always? And sometimes you miss and you, you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Well, that's... Okay, I feel that happens, but I feel it shouldn't. Right. We shouldn't let it happen. Right. I you mean, know, you I should. I feel we yeah. should shoot the dart like it's our last dart no matter what. You know, I feel that right. way. I, I tell that to myself sometimes. Uh, like if I'm way up in a leg, what I tell myself is finish this leg as quick as you can before he warms up. Mm -hmm. Be Don't done let him with get it. Especially rhythm. on right. the diddle tour where it's you only got to win two legs anyway. You know what I mean? If somebody's yeah. starting really slow and you can like... Don't let him get in a rhythm. No. Well, not so much get in a rhythm, but yeah, don't let him get going. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if you can end it quick, why not? I'll tell sit you there what, and have him bleed all over you and three. get revived, <laughs> you know. Sorry, go ahead, Sean. I'm babbling. Sorry. Opposed to a best of three to a best of 11. You getting two points or two legs in the best of 11 doesn't mean as much in the best of three, I guess. Well, yeah, because well. it's a win. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You know, I just, saying that, that's the point, right? Yes, yes. Well, Sean, I'll look forward to uh, sitting down and talking to you in Atlantic City this weekend, and, and we do appreciate you uh, coming on the show. I'm glad. It, I know it was short notice and everything. I appreciate you getting on Skype and everything. No, that's you know, okay. Thank looking, you for having me. Well, looking forward to talking to you. We'll have to get you on uh, again. Um, let's see. Are you, are you planning on uh, – what's the rest of your year? Are you going to try to go through the PDC Tour School? Are you just focusing on the youth or, or the PDC Unicorn Youth thing? No, what? I'll be at the Q School, I think. Okay. I'm pretty sure I'll be there. That's the plan. Uh, since I'm not signing the waiver, I, I probably go. <laughs> yeah, I – yeah, okay. I'm not – I'm, I'm too tired for a waiver conversation, so we'll we'll just we'll, we'll we'll pull that. I'll I'll just put you in the column of, gee, I wish there was none of this waiver business, <laughs> right? You know, which is exactly. the column pretty much everybody, but like five people in the ADO are in. So, right. I mean, I don't, exactly. I, don't know, I don't know how it is. I don't know how it works in Canada. Maybe I'll find out a little bit more about it. Um, again, thanks for uh, coming on the show, Sean, and we will uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right, talk to you soon. Good luck this weekend, Sean. Yeah, good luck, right. Sean. Right. Bye, Mark. Sean Narain from uh, Calgary, in Alberta, Canada. Yeah. Uh, I found that relatively fascinating. You know, Just the, relatively? Well, he said a couple of things that I was actually, I thought were jaw-dropping. You mm -hmm. know, he's playing 501, and he's like, well, I'm playing the man. Yeah. And I'm like... I haven't tried to do that in like seven or eight years. And he's watching the darts. When when how often do you watch your opponent's darts fly in the air? Do you? Cause do I always, watch them in the air? I, I've um, always thought you said that you don't pay attention. Well, what I do is I don't watch somebody like if, if you know there it's like a nine dart warm up or something. I'm not going to watch and see what he hits. No, I may okay, look right, and but see the his match. darts in the air. Mm -hmm. Well, you have to verify his score. So you need to, you, you can't just put blinders on and stare at your feet and then trust the chalker to you know right. get everything right. I mean, as a player, it's your responsibility to verify your opponent's score, right? That's mm -hmm. part of mm -hmm. you know being a player. And if you don't do it, you know, you do that, you do that at your own risk. People make mistakes. They make honest mistakes. People yeah. make uh, errors chalking. I had a guy 
Well, here's a, you know, I mean, I, we're going really long here, but we'll just going. end it on this. We're already gone long. Well, okay. <laughs> well, I was chalking and, uh, for two players, and what, what happened was the, the one guy went up, and his first start bounced out on the, on the triple 20, and then he threw a, a triple 20 and a single 20, so I wrote down 80. His opponent goes up, throws three darts, grabs his darts, goes back, and then the, the player with the bounce out who shot the 80 comes to the line. He's like, well, that wasn't an 80. That was a 120. Yeah, too right? late. And then his opponent is like, well, I didn't see it. Well, well okay, thanks a lot. Mm-hmm. Now it's between you know the player and the chalker. And, you know, uh, there's, I guess there's rules for this situation, but the only point I'm making is had, had the opponent saw it, that would have been the deciding vote. Right. Right. Well, I saw it. Yeah. Looked like a 120 to me, you know, whatever. I mean, you know, and then you, see what yeah, I'm saying? you change it. Yeah. So, you know, he's, he's talking about playing the man and, and looking at the darts and stuff like that. I mean, that's, re- that's required, mm-hmm. you know, when you're playing in a singles match. And I think, uh, somebody was on the PDC talking about this very thing. Saying that you know you got to look at what the at, at the guy does, but I think you know in America you play so much cricket that a lot of people make that distinction. Well, in cricket you play the man, and in five hundred one you play the board, mm-hmm. and and we've talked about you know how five hundred one's a sprint, and if you're running a hundred yard dash, you don't look at the guy in the next lane the whole way. You look straight ahead, and boom, there you go, right? Yeah. But you know his his points well taken. You know, I mean, if 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 you're on, you know. 121 and the other guys on 290 you're you you're gonna shoot at that 121 yeah, different might than throw you would something di- right if the guy's on you know 156 you don't want to throw the wrong dart right. well no so you know that awareness that he's talking about you know seems awfully sophisticated for a 20 year mm-hmm. old yeah very i mean and this whole deal like i started out as a three-year-old throwing at the three i mean i'm like oh my god are you <laughs> kidding me but the other and and you know the the what, what he, when he talks about how the, uh, I, I assume he meant English youth, but we'll, we'll say that the European kids, how enthusiastic they are and how gung-ho they are for the game, you know, where, you know, it, it seems to me, you know, our youths kind of are isolated, you know, and they don't have like, you know, if, if you're a youth playing in, South Carolina. I mean, how many people are there to play with? Not, and well, it's so no, expensive right. to travel. Yeah. Right. So how are you going to get that experience? You know, if if your friends aren't playing. Right. You know, and stuff like that. So he's talking about all these great Canadian youth players that don't even play anymore. I, I guarantee you. You know, we had uh, Stacy Whitney was our uh, newcomer of the year two years ago, and I think she quit the game. I mm. think she had shoulder problems and stuff like that. So I mean, you know, that's a huge loss. You know, to the sport, you know, where, you know, you're trying to grow new players and, and they can't even make it to 21. Right. No, right? I agree. So I, I don't I don't see any easy solutions to this. No, one. it's tough. I mean, you know, you would like I mean, he played hockey and darts. You would like people that could play football, baseball to play darts as well. And maybe everybody, you know, I, that was the silliest thing I ever heard. He's playing hockey. What if he catches well, a puck d- on his <laughs> dart hand? He's uh, not playing it competitively, he's, but he's, it's, he's, it's good he's, exercise. <laughs> you're, you're, you not, have you're not playing competitively. You have gloves. How many like casual pickup games have you started in any sport that ended up to be a quasi bloodbath? <laughs> you know, how many touch football games did you play where pretty much it was cross body blocks for an hour and a half? I mean, that's <clears> how it was. That's how it is when yeah, you're young. Yeah, but I mean, are you going to really not play some touch football or play some hockey because you're worried about your dart? Elbow, you. I won't. I won't play sixteen-inch softball. Really? No, that's a sprained, broken finger waiting to happen. Yeah, catch it correctly. Ding! What? What do you got for the ding? Aside from the fact that you know this show's now eight hours long. Uh, Yeah, we're going on two. But um, my chat room here has a question. Okay. I had a double to end the game. My opponent was to start the next game. He threw at a double, then realized that I had won the prior game. Is that a question or statement? I, I don't even. He know then what restarted with. I just got the second part of it. Okay, I don't understand. He then restarted with the 140, saying that was his start. Would you call him? I don't know what you're talking about now. You're you're talking about when you went up to the board and the chalker didn't mark what's, it down. What's the, the situation here? I couldn't follow it. Oh. He won. The, the guy won and hit a double. The that guy won a, the game and hit a double. His opponent goes up, thinking that the game's not over. Okay. Throws it a double. 
realizes that the game's over, picks his darts up, goes back to the line, and then no. opens up with a ton 40. No. No, I don't think I'd give him that. No. I, I, I think when he threw it the double, I'd, I'd have immediately said After it's the a, first it's a dart. new I, I just said, hey, it's a new leg. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean. How, don't let him throw three, but just go, hey, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> I could see I could see guys saying, hey, you know, it's a new game, and then, you know, you're starting over, but I know plenty of people that would say, no way. Mm-hmm. No way. I mean, you're supposed to know what the score is. I'll give you an example of what happened to me once. I was playing a very famous American player, and we were, uh, back then the PDC events were in sets. So you had, and the sets were best of five, right? So I had, I had won a set, and the sets were alternate start. So I won the set on my throw, but then to start the next set was also my throw, right? Because it was my set to start first, to have games one, three, and five, mm-hmm. right? So I win the set, you know, I go pull my darts, and then... I'm ready to go back to the line, but I want to take a sip of water. So as I'm taking a sip of He's water, he jumps to the line and throws a ton 40. And I'm like, uh, it's my start. Right. And actually, somebody who was watching said, hey, Steve, it's your start. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I don't know what he's doing. So he goes, pulls his darts, and you know, I, I'm like, uh, it's my start. The chalker erases it. I go up, buck 80. And it was a pretty buck 80, too. <laughs> I threw some pretty buck 80s over the weekend, so we'll see. How I do in Atlantic City. Uh, there was a lot we did not get to, but... There's a shock. Let me just say one thing that everybody should do that listens to the show is go on the internet and check out this website. It, it's a brand new website that you know I looked at you know briefly and just thought it was awesome. It's called... Uh, hang on, I wrote it down. Down there. It's kryptonitegirls.com. www.kryptonitegirls.com. Um, I don't know if it was uh, Sandy Hudson's husband put it together or something, but it's basically 10 or 12 women with this website, and it, it's it's very personable. It's you know kind of nicely done. It's got photos and stuff, and it's like you could look up their horoscope and all this other stuff. And I, I, I didn't have time to really you know go through it, but they had little biographical tidbits of all these women, and it ties in very much to something I wanted to talk about that we're not going to have time to, which is I'm starting to, to think that maybe we should just have a big money women's tournament held somewhere. No mixed what, just, doubles, no men's just doubles. Just kind of... Actually, a tournament for women right. that pays out the kind of money that the men's tournaments mm-hmm. pay out. So if you could get 100 women to show up to this tournament, they could leave their guys at home right. and just do a women's tournament. That's what I was thinking. All right. As an idea. Well, hopefully we could talk about that so, next so week. So we'll try to talk about that next week. Yeah. Everybody can like think about whether or not they think that would work or something. <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks for your patience. I know we started late. I know we ran long. Sorry Atlantic about City that. this week. Good Atlantic luck. Atlantic City this week. Good luck to everybody. Uh, ocean one of the two ocean September mm-hmm. for me. We Looking will be Wednesday next week, correct? Wednesday next, next yeah, week. Yeah, we'll be Wednesday next week, and then the Tuesday after that, and then we're back to back Wednesdays to, yeah. ad nauseum. So that'll be right. good. Uh, got anything, chat room girl? Nope. <laughs> We're going to have to have a meeting. Um, Again, thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks for your patience. And uh, we will dart talk to you next week. Everybody take care. We'll be back for the after party in in about a minute. But thanks for listening.